Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Composer Development Program concert for 2021. I think the most thrilling thing is that we are here at all. After rescheduling this, I've lost count of the number of times, I think it was three. We do have in the audience <laughs> two of the composers and the wonderful five stream team, as well as one of the team of pianists members, Rowan Murray. We are presenting this concert in conjunction with the team of pianists at the beautiful historic mansion Glenfern um, in Eastern Kilda in Melbourne. So thank you everybody for being here. And a big thank you to the Beeson Family Foundation, Victorian Women's Trust, the City of Melbourne and to all of our fifth string patrons and all of our sponsors and supporters who have helped get us through the last 18 months and still managed to keep on supporting the creation and the nurturing of new music in Australia for String Quartet. Um, I've mentioned Fivestream, but I think they deserve another mention, the amazing company that um, allows you to hear all of this. We've got Harry and Bex on duty today, so we're in very, very good hands. This composer development program started when we realised that there was not a hope that we could get through the piles of scores the composers had sent us, and we really wanted to, but it was just going to take a lot of time. So we decided to dedicate um, time every year to look through new scores and choose some to workshop, record and perform. This year we've chosen out of a record number of entries, I think there are over 50 entries, we have chosen five composers anonymously. Um, so we had no idea um, who, who we were choosing. I think one year we even had one composer that was selected twice. <laughs> so she put in two, two works and, and both of them were chosen. So with that news, composers out there, keep a look out for next year. Entries will close March 31st and we do encourage anybody to apply. There is no restriction. All that we ask is that you are emerging. So we've got our five composers um, for tonight. Uh, we have three Victorians, um, one Queenslander and one New South Welsh person who has actually managed to cross the border and be with us <laughs> in person. Um, if you're thinking about applying, I would greatly encourage you to do so. Some of our past composers have gone on to do some fabulous things. Matthew Lang is having his work premiered this week with the Melbourne Chamber Orchestra and has gone on to become a Cybac MSO composer as well as a Music of Eva future maker. Ella Masons uh, was commissioned by some of our dear patrons, Peter and Leela Doyle, um, to write a piece for our subscription series last year. This year? This year. We performed it this year. This year. Um, Natalie Nicholas has gone on to have great success and Natalie will be one of our five emerging composers um, writing a vignette for next year for our subscription series based on Beethoven's Grosse Fugue. So really, the world's your oyster once you apply to the Flinders Quartet Development <laughs> Programme. <laughs> Without further ado, I think we're going to get underway. Um, and our first composer is here with us, um, Keridwen McCooey. And I think now we would like to have a little message from Keridwen that she recorded earlier. Hi everyone, so my name's Keridwen and you're about to hear my piece Too Late for Dancing. I wrote this piece during one of the lockdowns because I started realising how much young people were struggling with not being able to dance anymore. And um, yeah, I, I sort of realised how much of a coping mechanism dancing can be, especially for young people. And I sort of wanted to explore the dichotomy of um, something so happy and joyful, such as dancing, being actually a way to express such tremendous pain. And um, yeah, so I guess this is my musical interpretation of that specific feeling. So thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy.
it is to have applause. It's, it's really lovely. Thank you, Winnie. Thank you. Thank you very much. What a great way to start the concert. I feel quite cleansed. Mm -hmm. And it was very remiss of me not to introduce um, the guest members that we have here this evening. Erica Kennedy, much loved founding member of Flinders Quartet. Um, so we played together, the three of us, for 12 years. And um, we're just thrilled that Erica has come back and a big hello to Tibbo, who's watching from New South Wales, and we'll see you next week, Tib. And the darling Elizabeth Sellers, very lucky to have Liz with us. She's done a number of projects with us over the years, and it's always such a treat, privilege, and thrill to play with Liz. And a big hello to Wilma, and we'll see you next week as well. <laughs> um, so now we're moving on to Eugene Ball and his piece, Kaleidoscope. And here's a message from Eugene. Hi, I'm Eugene Ball and I'm rapt that the Flinders Quartet are going to be performing my piece Kaleidoscope tonight. Uh, a little about the piece. The piece is in two halves. The first is built on a series of seven note chords that are derived from a scale, which is one of a group of 22 new scales that I stumbled across a few years ago and have been working with ever since. I won't go into too much detail. But the scale that Kaleidoscope is built on is made by interweaving two intervallic series. The first is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And the second is negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10, negative 11, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. Now, that may not mean a great deal to you, which is totally fair enough. Uh, but when those two intervallic series are interwoven, um, the resulting scale sounds like this. Uh, the second half of the piece is a distorted reflection of the first. 
uh, techniques of preparation are introduced to facilitate the distortion, including the use of blue tack, paper clips, foil, and a guiro bow. Uh, I really hope you enjoy the piece, Kaleidoscope. It's been uh, a great deal of fun to write it and to workshop it with the fabulous uh, Flinders Quartet. So I'd really like to thank Zoe, Helen, Liz, Erica, and of course, Wendy for making all of this happen.
Thank you, Eugene. That was some of those sounds. We have never encountered them before, and um, we just love the sound world, particularly the kalimba sort of sound world with the blue jack on the strings. Um, when we received that score, it looked so interesting, and before we accepted, I did ask everybody, would you be prepared to put blue jack on your instrument? Um, but lots of Lots of fun sounds there and such a fantastic new sound world. Thank you, Eugene. Um, and now, if I go to the next uh, message, we have the next composer. Um, we have a message from Hannah Lavers from New South Wales. Hello, my name is Hannah Lavers and I'm the composer of The Work Teeth. It was my final major work for my degree uh, in 2020 and I wanted to write a piece of music which I would enjoy listening to. Uh, I titled it Teeth because I needed to submit it that day. But in hindsight, it works quite well in describing what I think the music sounds like. It's a bit mean and it's a bit weird and it has a bit of a bite. I hope you enjoy it.
thank you, Hannah, for just giving us that rhythmical challenge. It was so much fun to play. It was really fun. Um, and I just hope my mouth wasn't moving too much with all the counting. <laughs> um, so now we go to Queensland and Alexander Volts. And here is a message that Alexander recorded earlier. Hi. I'd hoped to record this introductory Yay, message to you outside during the day, but we haven't had the best weather in Brisbane, so you'll have to put up with my kitchen at night time. A big thank you to the Flinders Quartet and all their partners for providing this exciting opportunity in their Composers Development Program. It's really been a wonderful experience. This first string quartet, for me, is a more intimate extension of concepts explored within my oboe concerto, Expressions on Solitude. My extrovert and introvert are in constant competition. I think introvert wins out, uh, but there's a sort of hollow quality to this quartet, so perhaps it's a pyrrhic victory. Otherwise, I have recently found much enjoyment in writing music without any sort of distinct narrative structure instead concentrating on form and proportion. This is not to say that my work is now suddenly uninspired. Indeed, it remains deeply personal. But by exploring processes that are without concrete or at least authorial meaning, thus rendering those processes entirely interpretive, one creates a powerful experience not just for audiences, but for individuals. While the traditional string quartet is a work of multiple movements, I am content with the first's length. This, for me, is a prologue. Thank you.
bit in shock that we <laughs> actually managed to do that. Thank you, Alexander, for that really fantastic, engaging and very difficult. <laughs> I can say that now that we've done it, please. We, there's so much in there. Love it. Really love it. Um, now, while you're hearing from Mark Vendy, our fifth and final composer, we're going to do a little switcheroo because um, this piece, Mark requires the violins to be played antiphonally. So Liz and I are going to swap spots while you're listening from Mark Vendy. Good evening, I'm Mark Vendy. Yeah. I'd like to begin by thanking Flinders Quartet, Tibor, Wilma, Helen and Zoe, together with Dr Abbott for choosing this score with the four other scores from among the worthy compositions submitted for 2021's Composer Development Program. In addition, I'd like to thank Erica and Liz for stepping into the violin parts, to Fivestream for the audio and visual work, to the Quartet's financial sponsors and supporters whose funding underpins the program, and to Flinders Quartet's indefatigable manager, Wendy Avaloff. This year was the second where I contributed to the program. Needless to say, I was not discouraged by my first miss, so I encourage any who previously submitted and all aspiring composers to consider submitting a score in 2022. I congratulate the composers of the other scores selected, Winnie, Alexander, Hannah and Eugene. I followed all of your workshops and I know you'll write more wonderful things. Interesting Times was written in optimism, that COVID was on the way and that we might be able to put it behind us. Well, that turned out to be premature. It was the obvious impact on our way of living that became reflected in the title. The players were gracious enough to allow me to choose the movement to be showcased in workshop and performance. And whilst it was hard to leave out the others, I selected this one, the one that you're about to hear, Stamp Dance. Stamp Dance is the most difficult of the four movements. It refers to all of the previous material imparting an episodic character to the score. The instrumental lines are frequently in opposition to one another, rhythmically and melodically, and it is all maintained at a lively pace. Nonetheless, the score of this quartet is not about effects and should sound both conventional and different. I hope you enjoy Stamp Dance. Thank you. 
thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys are great. This is wonderful. We'll invite you to every concert. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in tonight. Huge thank you to our five composers and thank you to everybody who applied this year. There were so many pieces that we wish we could have played and just weren't able to, so make sure you apply again next year. It is an anonymous selection process, so we have no idea who you are. A big thank you to the Beeson Family Foundation, to the Victorian Women's Trust, to the City of Melbourne, Five Stream, the team of pianists, Erica and Liz, the amazing five composers, and the brilliant Wendy up there in Queensland man managing us in the most splendid Splendid. Splendid. <laughs> splendid. <laughs> the most splendid fashion. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night.